Hi there, this is section 3.2 and I wanted to go over this question that looks at interpreting the standard deviation. So this is something I did in a face-to-face -face class and I wanted to also make a video so that everyone could go over it again. So here is the information. Suppose you are performing an experiment with two different methods for treating anxiety. And in this case you're measuring anxiety with the hospital anxiety and depression score, the HADS and I guess it's a score from 0 to 21. I actually got this off of a nursing statistics website, so I'm hoping that the hospital anxiety and depression score is a real thing, but I have no idea if it is or not. But suppose you have two different methods, method A and method B, and at the beginning, your patients had an average anxiety score of 6 with a standard deviation of 3 for each group. Afterwards, they had a mean anxiety level of 4 for each group, but group A had a standard deviation of 1, and group B had a standard deviation of 3. So again, this is their average anxiety score, and this is the standard deviation of their anxiety score. So true or false, treatment A and treatment B had the same mean anxiety results. So if you look at the mean here, we see that that is true. True, T, I'll make it red. Okay, part B. Treatment A had a more consistent reaction. So if you look at treatment A, which is right here, I'll make that, I'll highlight that for you. Treatment A had a smaller standard deviation, so that is true. It did have a more consistent reaction. So the after patients were done with treatment A, they, there was a smaller standard deviation in their anxiety levels, so they tended to cluster all around four. So that is true. The patients did have a more consistent reaction for treatment A. Here's another question. Every patient from treatment A had a lower anxiety score than patients from treatment B. So this is false. False. So in general, they had the same mean, and treatment A had a smaller standard deviation. So what this tells us right here is that for treatment B, the patients were more spread out. This bigger standard deviation of three means that some patients that got treatment B had a really high anxiety. They were up in the 7, 10, 14, but some had a really low anxiety. So maybe they were in the 0 to 1 range. So some of the patients in treatment B had a lower anxiety than the ones in treatment A, but in general, they had the same mean but treatment A, the patients were more clustered around a score of four, and for treatment B, the average was still four, but they were more spread out. So it is not true, this is false, that every patient in treatment A had a lower anxiety score. So suppose you had to interpret these results. Were both methods the same in treating anxiety? So again, this came from a journal article where they gave some results. I doctored this data so it would be nice and pretty and clean for you. So how would you interpret these results? You say that they have the same mean. The only thing that's different here is the after standard deviation. So here's a couple of ways you could interpret the results. Here's some example interpretations. Interpretations, that's a capital S. You could say both treatments worked the same for reducing anxiety. However, treatment B had a larger standard deviation, right there, larger standard deviation. This means that the patients had much different reactions to treatment B. The range and spread of the anxiety scores after treatment B was wider, so there was a bigger range of responses. Because treatment A has a lower standard deviation, we see that the patients had a more consistent reaction, I could say, to treatment A. So, thank you. Caps off. So again, these are the true or false, and I already went over those. So that's just an example of how you might look at a chart like this and make decisions about which of the statements are true or false.